Okay, yep, it's Greg and Glorious Nick Dutch here yet again. Um, showing you wood gas stove version 2, which I started to make during a time when my computer decided that uh, it was doing something far more important than me making a living. Uh, <laughs> so I thought I'd take my anger out on a couple of tins. Now, um, if, I mean, I want this channel to be relatively general, so if there's something on this in this video you don't like, forget about it, don't worry about it. I will have some of my usual weird stuff coming up uh, in no time, okay? But anyway, this is just for general interest for people who are interested, interested in this sort of thing, and if you're not, then don't worry about it. Uh, and just wait for the next video, okay? So here we go. Now, the last wood gas stove I made was a bit small, and I think that was part of its problem. So, fortunately, I've come across a golden syrup can and a Waitrose espresso coffee can, and they seem to fit perfectly one inside the other, which is a basically brilliant. Presumably the biggest obstacle you go through when trying to get um, tins together to make these wood gas stoves is finding tins which are relatively compatible or failing that using your mechanical skills to um, design them so they can be usable. The outer tin as before has large holes drilled around the bottom. No other holes drilled in it at all. I hope I've done enough there. I'm not sure. I don't know. Smaller tin has some large holes drilled around the base to allow some airflow in there and a whole mesh of um, lots of little holes there. Hopefully they're at the right size and type. I don't know. Again, maybe this is, this is still experimental. And at the top we've got small holes here which are for the jets as they're called them. I think we have to get the idea and terminology right because these are hot air jets. They're not gas jets. The gas comes out of the burning substance inside the can and as it goes up it then gets reignited by the hot air. The thing that's cool about this is that it's a very close fit between the two tins so when the air comes in at the bottom and goes up between the two tins it'll get very very hot because it's such a thin distance, it's such a small distance between the two tins. So when it finally gets out through the jet holes it should be nice and piping hot ready to create gasification. The last, sorry, the um, ready to create flames. And actually the last attempt at the wood gas stove that I made only had four holes at the top. Now this is a slightly larger opening, so maybe more holes are needed. And that might be able to create a stronger flame. Let's hope. Alright, so I've also read more into how to set these things alight. Um, initially I thought that the idea that you've got to fill the, um, the gas wood stove up first and then um, uh, and then try and set the fire on top of it didn't quite make sense. Well, as it turns out, I was wrong there. And yes, you do need to have some wood in the bottom and then have some kind of fire burning on the top. One clever method that I saw was to firstly fill up the gas wood stove with lots of twiggy bits that are small enough to fit in there, still allowing some airflow. And then you put some basically thin twigs on the top. So lots of thin twigs on the top there and you build um, a small wood stack on top of that and you have fire lighters underneath your thin bridge so the fire lighters then burn the wood on the top which then falls down on top of the rest of the wood you've got here and then starts the um, slow and steady reaction of burning down so that you end up with a regular or a, a relatively steady flow of gas production whilst you're trying to do your cooking. So I'll try this out relatively soon and I'll put my results up here on this um, on YouTube so you can all see what happens. And I think, well, the only bad thing about this is there's a very slight air leak at the top there, but I don't think that's going to affect it too much. Or if it does, then I can create a collar made out of thick-ish aluminium foil and shove that around it to try and block it off. All right, so I should I should be okay. Uh, I'm actually looking forward to trying to cook some food on this type of system. I'm not sure whether you can see it, but I'll show it to you now. There's, um, there's a good difference in height between the two tins, so there should be enough airflow. The um, bottom of this tin here is above these larger holes for the most part, um, so that should draw in air there, so it can then go through the wood stack there, and some of the air can still go in here and keep the blaze alight. Um, all in all, for a quick rush job, I'm actually quite pleased with that. And unlike my experiments into hydrogen, 
this has actually cost sod all to make because it's made up out of crap that's lying around the house. Um, you know, if you want to make everything or anything, make it nice and cheap. Alright. As I say, I'll be going back to uh, weird videos on weird subjects soon, so don't worry about it, alright? Speak to you soon. Bye for now.